Well, the first thing, of course, is to recognize that this is one of the worst humanitarian situations that we have currently anywhere in the world, with the extent, of course, of suffering inflicted on the Syrian population and the conflict dynamics since 2011. UNRWA's specific focus is on the originally 560,000 Palestine refugees that were in Syria before the war. These were self-sufficient people. They had uh, their businesses, they had their jobs, and really only sent their children to UNRWA schools because the education was a free service and a quality service, but they were otherwise not dependent on us. Today we have over 80,000 of Palestine refugees from Syria that have fled to neighboring countries and beyond. 60% of the 560,000 are displaced inside the country. They have now been another generation of Palestinians who have lost homes, livelihoods, but also relatives and friends and so you know the, the shock waves that this sends through the Palestine refugee communities uh, around the region are very significant and whilst of course legitimately the world focuses on the Syrians because of the extent of the suffering it's our role really to remind everyone that in the middle of this dis disaster you have a more forgotten tragedy which is that of Palestine refugees. Let's stay a little bit with education there's there's a great fear that, uh, that there's going to be a whole generation of, of children that have no access to education because of this conflict. Um, do you fear that, that this can be this can lead to more radicalization and problems for the rest of the world? Well, the, the first thing to remember is that um, conflict always disrupts development processes. And it's, uh, when you look at the fact that in recent studies carried out by the UN family with uh, Syrian institutions, you see that at birth today, the life expectancy has has gone down from about 75 to just about 55 years, so it's a loss of 20 years in this short period of time. It's a staggering figure altogether. In education terms, of course, yes, conflict also disrupts because UNRWA has dozens of schools in Syria, many of which are either filled with displaced people, many others are not reachable, others have been damaged and destroyed. So we have had to be very creative and adaptive in opening temporary education centers, in being able to do distance learning for those children that cannot reach schools altogether. And currently we have out of the original total of 65,000 students in our schools, we have been able to reach 45,000 of them. Now, so we're making a major effort for this to be prevented, what you're describing, a lost generation. UNRWA has a lot of experience in dealing with uh, education in armed conflict environments but it is a major worry throughout the region I don't you know there is no established correlation between education or lack thereof and radicalization we know that there have been very educated and very radicalized people so you cannot make that direct correlation a causal link but of course you know the, the, the greater the hardship that people are exposed to. The longer the solutions that are, have to be found for dignity for Palestine refugees uh, remain elusive, of course, the greater the risks are that the community becomes further radicalized altogether because of the sense of injustice. And I think this can be addressed, and UNRWA, of course, plays a role by providing a measure of dignity and stability for those communities. Uh, just one last question. Uh, we're going to see a new round of aid funding now with K3. Uh, how is UNRWA going to, to use that money and uh, help the, the lives of uh, Palestinian children who have been displaced? Well, before the pledges today, our appeal of five, 415 million for Syria this year has been covered by only 4%. So we're certainly very keen to see more support coming because the cash and food and other vital elements of our support, including medical assistance, if they cannot be delivered in Syria, you will have more people leaving the country, you will have more in refugees in neighboring countries and migrants going further afield. So the role that we play inside is absolutely essential in that regard and we really are very hopeful that in the fields of education, health, but also emergency relief, we can live up to the expectations of the Palestine refugees in Syria.